What's up, my people, and welcome to the channel. My name is Diamond, and this is the place where personal finance intersects with the real world to help you achieve your financial goals. And today I have a special topic. It's the top of the year, and it's the perfect time to talk about rebalancing your investment portfolio. So I want to explain what rebalancing is, how do you do it, and how often you should do it. And stick around to the end because I'm going to show you an awesome tool that I use to help you look at your portfolio, analyze it, and see the pros and cons of rebalancing your portfolio. So rebalancing, what is that? Well, if you watch my video on how to open a brokerage account, then you should know exactly what that is. And hopefully you've opened your brokerage account and you're investing every single month. Now, before you started investing, I pray that you created an investment strategy because you don't want to just be throwing money out there and hope returns will come. You want to have a strategy. And so the rebalancing is basically making sure that your portfolio reflects your strategy. And the longer you go without rebalancing, the more your portfolio is going to drift off from your original strategy. Now, what do I mean by strategy? Investment strategies are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Warren Buffett says you should just put your money in an S&P 500 fund. Jack Bogle, the creator and founder of Vanguard, pioneered the three fund portfolio, which is basically where you put your money in three different funds spread across stocks and bonds. Another very popular strategy is you take a, your age and subtract it from 100, and that'll tell you the percentage that you should have in stocks and you should have in bonds. Or more recently, they bumped that number up to, I believe, 120 so you can get even more money into stocks. But that's some of the strategies out there, and it's a lot more. But what this is, is once you choose one of these strategies, let's go for simplicity in this video and say, you decide that you want to have 50% of your money in stocks, you want to have 50% of your money in bonds. And again, this is not my recommendation for this strategy. Do your research and decide for yourself what strategy you want in order to hit your long-term financial goals. But for simplicity, let's go with 50-50. So you start off today and you have $1,000 that you're going to start investing. And you put 500 in stocks, 500 in bonds. And you can do that between ETFs or mutual funds. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but you have this money out there and you're going to put in $1,000 a month. So you can see over time, you're going to have a pretty large amount of money in these investments. So what's going to happen is as you move forward, let's go a year in advance. We just wrapped up 2021. So look at 2021. You've been investing for the whole year. Your strategy is 50% is what you want in stocks. 50% is what you want in bonds. Now here's where rebalancing comes into play because one of those two are going to outperform the other. It's highly unlikely that they're going to perform exactly the same. And if you look at the charts, you will see that the stock market has outperformed bonds as far back as my, I can remember. So what's going to happen is your stock side of that portfolio is going to have a higher rate of return than the bond historically. So what that means is your stock portfolio, that 50% you started off with, is going to grow at a faster rate. And when you look at it, you're not going to be at 50-50 a year in, two years in, five years in, because again, the stock side is growing faster than the bond side. And if your strategy is still 50%, now you have to rebalance. And rebalancing is simply selling some things that was doing really good and buying the things that you want to make sure your strategy is still in place. And that may sound counterproductive because if something is really performing and your stocks is going through the roof and it's just giving you great returns, you may think, well, why? Well, why would I want to sell those to buy into more bonds? And this is where it all comes back to the very beginning. And you want to have a strategy before you start investing, because part of your strategy should be to manage risk as well as ensure that you get the type of returns that you're looking for. And what could happen if you don't rebalance is one side of the portfolio could go through the roof and everything is doing great. You're having some up years. The returns is great. You're smiling. You're happy. And then you have a shift in the market and something happens. And now what was doing great, in this case, we're talking your stock side was doing amazing. Now, it's in the negative returns. 
And because your portfolio has become so far off balance, that original plan of 50-50 and whatever reason you put that strategy together is no longer going to work because you're not doing that strategy anymore. You're off doing something else. So that's why even though it may be sound counterproductive, you may want to look at rebalancing your portfolio so that you can keep your portfolio in line with your strategy. Now, that's not to say that you don't sometimes change your strategy because for me, you know, I didn't know a lot about investing, really nothing about investing. I learned everything as an adult. I learned things the hard way, the expensive way. I made videos on that. I talked about one about it's time to break the cycle. You should check that video out and that'll give you better insight of where I come from. And you will see that I had to learn all this stuff on my own. So when I first got out of debt and I first started investing, my investing was pretty straightforward and primitive. And today it's still pretty boring because investing, to be honest, is not that exciting. Um, so that was where I was at. But as the years went on, I have learned a little bit more. I'm a little more versed when it comes to what to invest in, how things perform, because I'm in it. I'm studying the market. I'm studying the history of the stock market. I'm understanding the economy. I'm getting a better understanding of how all this stuff works together. And so what that means is that my investment strategy very well and is most likely going to change as time go forward. And that's okay. But you just want to make sure you're doing things on purpose and you're not letting your returns or what you see over here dictate your investment strategy because everything can change. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring in this crazy world of investing. So you want to make sure you stick to a proven strategy. Now let's jump on the computer real quick and I'm going to show you an awesome tool that I use and that you can use to help you decide whether or not you should rebalance and how often. Before we do that, can you do me a favor? Click the like button to let YouTube know and to let me know that you're getting value out of this video and then share this video with somebody you know who could use this information. Now let's jump onto the computer. In order to bring this idea of rebalance into life, we're gonna use a tool called Portfolio Visualizer, which is really an insult to this tool because it's an extremely powerful tool that you can use in order to test different investment strategies and theories and I'll leave a link to it down in the description but for this example we're simply going to do a back test of an investment portfolio and we're going to go with the same strategy we've been talking about which is 50% in stocks and 50% in bonds we're going to run this portfolio for 10 years so starting in 2011 and ending in 2021 $10,000 will be invested and we're not going to rebalance this portfolio at all because we want to see what's going to happen to it so first we're going to go in and put 50% in stocks and what we're using is VOO which is a S&P 500 fund and for bonds we're going to use BND which is a total bond market ETF and we're going to have 50% going in there. And the first thing we want to do is look at what happens to the portfolio when you don't rebalance and we're going to compare that to when you do rebalance and what happens when you rebalance often. So right now you can see without rebalancing, this portfolio, this $10,000 turned into $30,000. Woohoo! Hooray! Now the best year is where I want to bring your attention to. The best year, the worst year, and the max drawdown. Pay attention to these percentages. The best year it returned 30 or 23%. The worst year it lost negative uh, 3% and the max drawdown was a negative 13%. So these two numbers is what rebalancing is set to manage because part of your strategy, I hope, is to manage your risk. And this is the risk of investing. Of course, we all want to make money, but over here you see a drawdown of 13%. Now, if you're like me and you're not looking to touch your investment accounts for 20 or 30 years, that number may not scare you. But if you are in your later years of life or you're living off your investments, that drawdown of 13% may make you a little nervous. So let's go and look at allocation drift because that's what happens when you don't rebalance your portfolio. Remember the strategy that we're using, which was very primitive and not one that I recommend, not one that I'm using, but it's easy for demonstration purposes. So what we have here is we started with a 50-50 spread over stocks and bonds. And as time went on, you'll see that 
we're moving further and further away from our original strategy. So by the end of this, we have 76% in stocks and only 23% in bonds. So you may want to rebalance your portfolio because that's where you keep your portfolio in line with your strategy, which hopefully your strategy was designed off of your investment goals and your risk tolerance. And this is how you keep all of that in check. So now let's go take a look at what happens if you rebalance this portfolio annually. So every year we're going to go in and rebalance and make sure we're back at our original 50-50 spread. So what you notice here is the final balance on this account is now $26,000, which is about $4,000 less than not rebalancing at all. But pay attention to these three percentages over here. The best year, 20%, which again, not quite as good as 23%, but... The worst year is also not quite as bad as not rebalancing from 3% down to 2%. And then the max drawdown, again, a negative 9%. So by rebalancing this portfolio, you were able to manage the risk and the drawdowns wasn't as bad. The worst year it had wasn't as bad, but also the best year wasn't as good and the total returns wasn't quite the same as it was when you didn't rebalance at all. So it's easy to see that rebalancing is not about maximizing your return and just getting the most money you can make and the highest uh, percentage return points. It's about managing your risk and keeping your portfolio in line with your strategy. Because again, think about this. If you're older and you're needing this money, you want to manage this drawdown. You want to manage these bad years just as much as you want to make money because you can't afford to take huge risk. Now, if you're somebody like me who's not going to touch your investment portfolio for 20 or 30 years, maybe a drawdown of 13% or not rebalancing, maybe that's the way you want to roll, but you want to make sure you're doing this on purpose and you're not just letting it fly because this is using historical data because that's all we really have and historical data is good to look at what happened. It's not so great at telling us what the future is going to hold. So this is no guarantee that you would get this in the future. So again, make sure you have a good strategy and talk to a financial advisor, somebody who's in the business so that you achieve your financial goals. Now, real quick, I want to show you what would happen if you rebalance this portfolio every single month. So now when we rebalance every single month, you can see that the final balance is about the same as it was when we rebalanced annually. The best year, close. The worst year, close. Max drawdown close. So all of these numbers are pretty close. And the only thing that rebalancing every month versus annually did was cause you to do a lot more work and you didn't reap a lot of benefit from that. So rebalancing too often may give you a slight edge in your portfolio, but when you factor in the effort and time and money it took, it might not be as beneficial as you think. This brings me to our final topic. And that is, when it comes to rebalancing, how do you rebalance? You could choose one or two ways to rebalance your portfolio. One is the way we've been talking about, and that is based off of time, where you say every month, every quarter, every year, or biannually, I'm going to rebalance my portfolio, bring that portfolio back in line with my strategy. The other way you could go about rebalancing is based off of a deviation meaning that you set up your strategy and then you set up your deviation. What do you deem acceptable? Meaning that if I start this at 50-50, maybe I say I'm not going to rebalance the portfolio unless I get to 60-40 one way or the other. So now you're not needing to rebalance every month or annually. You're just looking at the portfolio and waiting until it hit that deviation. So now when we look at that and say, if this account hits a 60-40 split, I'm bringing it back down to my original strategy of 50-50. So if you look at this and go through the years, we started this back in 2011. You can see in 2014, stocks is at 58%. And if we go another year, stocks is now at 60%, a little over, and the bonds is just under 40%. So now that hit my deviation and now in 2015, I'm gonna rebalance this portfolio and I'm gonna bring it back to my 50-50 spread. 
So that's two ways you can go about rebalancing your portfolio. And again, it all comes back to your strategy. So I keep mentioning strategy because that is the most important thing when it comes to investing. You have to have a strategy, which means you have to have investing goals. And those goals are going to drive your strategy. So now you know a little bit more about rebalancing your portfolio. Let me know in the comment section, how often do you rebalance your portfolio? Or have you ever rebalanced your portfolio? And the reason behind that thought. Now, personally, I created my investment strategy back in 2019 after I became debt free. I did a ton of research and I came up with a strategy and I picked out specific funds that I felt confident in that I felt was going to get me where I needed to go. And I have not rebalanced my portfolio until right now in 2022. And that's because my portfolio did really well. And I was also running two different investment strategies in parallel because you hear what people tell you to invest in. You hear what strategies are great, but I'm the type of guy that I want to see for myself. So I put together two different portfolios and they've been running neck to neck side by side. And now it's at the point where now it's time to consolidate these things, come up with the one strategy that I'm going to use going forward. And that's going to cause me to rebalance my portfolio as well as changing my strategy at the same time. So that is my take on it. But let me know down in the comments section and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and your notifications are turned on because this is the place where personal finance intersects with the real world. Until next time, my name is Diamond. Peace.